Tens of thousands of people have become infected with the coronavirus, a respiratory illness that broke out in Wuhan, China, in December. So far, the rate of death is less than 3%. But as China scrambles to contain the viral epidemic, foreign nations are evacuating their citizens, and already the global economy is feeling the impact of cancelled flights and businesses closing. So is the coronavirus destined to become the next pandemic? Many certainly seem to think so. And the fear is leading to open racism against China. Joining me to discuss the Chinese and global responses to the coronavirus is Wang Guan, an anchor for China Global Television Network, CGTN, and their former chief political correspondent. He's been covering the coronavirus from CGTN headquarters, and he joins me now from Beijing. Uh, Wang Guan, thank you for joining me on Upfront. You've been following this story and this virus, which has killed more than, I believe, 500 people in China so far, tragically. Tell us, what is the situation in China right now? What's it like on the ground? Well, Mehdi, um, there has been a concerted national campaign against this, out, out, against this outbreak, but I'm not going to lie, uh, the situation is still grim. Um, 3,000 people getting infected every single day in the past couple of days. And we're doing a few things here. First of all, tending those very sick. Um, that's why experienced doctors are pulled from across the country to the ICUs in Wuhan. And secondly, tending those who are less symptomatic but are no less contagious. Because these people, in the past, um, there was a lack of medical resources to tend to these people. But these people were out and about um, passing the virus to others. So that uh, in the past few days, two hospitals were built in just two weeks and uh, 11 makeshift hospitals were built so that these people can be taken in and hopefully we can, we can cut their path of transmission. And yet one health expert at the University of Hong Kong said this week, quote, there's no sign that it's getting better. Is he right? Does China have the capacity to deal with this crisis at speed? I think we do have the capacity to deal with this epidemic. Um, well, right now, twice as many people, as many patients got recovered than those who died. And of course, if you look at the absolute numbers, there has been a uh, rise in those infected um, patients, but uh, that's partly because of better and quicker testing. Uh, diagnosis has been reduced from four days to just one. And also uh, the, the pool, the basis for suspected patients have been increased, meaning you take in not just those, um, you know, people in the past, but also who are coughing, who are showing symptoms. Okay. This week, the Politburo Standing Committee, made up of President Xi Jinping and China's top officials, admitted to, quote, shortcomings and deficiencies in the government's response to the outbreak. But it's more than just shortcomings and deficiencies, isn't it? When the outbreak began in Wuhan and eight people sounded the alarm, they were intimidated by local police. They were accused of making false comments. They were told to stop the, quote, illegal activity. Now hundreds of people are dead. That's what happens when you censor public opinion, isn't it? Well, Mehdi, here is what happened. Of course, um, there's no denying that there should have been more information, more transparency, and a better emergency response system in place in Wuhan in the first place. But it's also fair to say that Beijing was very quick to get on top of things. Um, you have um, the Chinese president saying that, you know, transparency is key, timely, publication of information is key. In fact, those eight people, the eight whistleblowers you mentioned, they were vindicated by none other than China's Supreme Court. OK. Uh, there's some who would argue that China's gone from one extreme to another, first pretending there's nothing wrong and rounding up people who complained about the virus, and now rounding up anyone who has the virus or anyone who doesn't report it. You have the vice premier, who's leading the government response, saying this week, and I quote, during these wartime conditions, there must be no deserters or they will be nailed to the pillar of historical shame forever. I think this quote is taken out of context. You've got to be brave. You've got to confront this virus. Um, the situation is grim. There needs to be a concerted effort. You cannot run away from the front line. I think this is what the vice premier means. Um, We're also seeing reports that there are confirmed cases of the coronavirus in Xinjiang, the region in western China, where some one million Muslim Uyghur Chinese citizens are being held in what the government calls re-education camps. Uh, should the coronavirus spread in that region or in those camps, does China have the infrastructure or the will to stop it from spreading there among the Uyghurs? Mehdi, I appreciate your concern, um, but I think that is a highly hypothetical question because right now... It's not Xinjiang hypothetical. Very, there, there is an outbreak uh, in Xinjiang. There is no outbreak in Xinjiang. There has been very, there have been very few cases in Xinjiang. Actually, Xinjiang ranks number six from the bottom in terms of the confirmed cases. Uh, there has not been a single death in Xinjiang so far. Uh, the situation is well under control over there. Well, we wouldn't know what's happening in the camps, obviously, because the media is not allowed in. Some media are allowed in, obviously. 
before we run out of time, let's talk about the global reaction. Uh, there have been travel restrictions, cancelled flights and evacuations by military aircraft. But so far, less than 1% of the deaths from this virus have happened outside of China. So do you believe the world is overreacting to this virus or not? I think some people are definitely overreacting. Uh, look, Mehdi, the, we, what we need right now are facts, not fear. 97% um, of the deaths occurred in Hubei, the epicenter. And 80% of the deaths are the seniors over 60 years of age with underlying diseases such as cardiovascular problems. So outside Hubei province, the death rate, the mortality rate is just 0.17%. To put that in perspective, according to CDC of the U.S., the flu death rate in the U.S. is just 0.13%. So the coronavirus, by and large, is much, much less lethal than MERS, for example, that has a 34% death rate or uh, Ebola, that's a 50% death rate. The coronavirus right now has an overall global death rate at 2%. What would you say to people in the West who say the problem is we can't trust whether China is being fully honest and accurate about the extent of this virus and its spread? Well, come to China and see for yourself. Um, up to the minute, updates on new infections, suspected cases, confirmed deaths are made available on virtually all media platforms. I just checked my phone right now. Um, actually, it is an issue of grave concern here in China, of great public concern. People are fighting this virus in solidarity. Um, those who don't trust China, they have a track record of not trusting China. It's their problem. Some are anti-China, some are xenophobic, uh, some are afraid of China's rise. On that note about being anti-China, uh, there have been numerous reports uh, of, you know, people making some pretty bigoted anti-Chinese racist remarks in the wake of this outbreak. Signs in Japanese restaurants that say no Chinese. A French newspaper with the headline, Yellow Alert. Uh, as a Chinese citizen and journalist, are you, are you worried about the rise and escalation in uh, anti-China racism as a result of this latest controversy? I think those um, events are disturbing. Uh, you have a woman in New York City Metro being pushed and, um, you know, caught racial slurs. Uh, those racial slurs are used against Chinese and Asians across Europe. Those are disturbing. But you know what's more disturbing? It's the Western media reports. For example, Der Spiegel, one of the most circulated magazines in Europe. They have a headline that read this. Um, the virus, regarding the coronavirus, a little racism is fine. And quote, thanks to the yellow-skinned slit eyes that we may all be dead soon. And you have the Wall Street Journal, of course, calling China the real sick man of Asia. Uh, these are really concerning issues because now some Westerners are calling China, calling the, uh, the coronavirus the China virus. But I didn't remember people calling Zika the Brazil virus or uh, Ebola the Congo virus. So people need not panic. Uh, people need facts. People look, should look at it in an objective manner. Yes, it originated from China. Uh, we have a lot of introspection to do as Chinese, but please show some respect because we, the Chinese people, are fighting this virus to the best of our abilities. Wang Guan, thank you for joining me on Upfront. Thank you, Mehdi. That's our show. Upfront will be back next week.